Hi there! Previously we discussed how many different issues could happen with machine learning models in production. Now we are going to discuss how to prepare to it, and this is monitoring. We are going to talk about machine learning monitoring and observability. So what is machine learning monitoring? Machine learning monitoring is a series of techniques to track and analyze the performance of machine learning models together with data quality in production. It helps us measure ongoing model quality, warn us about some potential issues and help to resolve them on time. Basically, we need to start care about machine learning monitoring when we deploy machine learning models to production. However, there are two more scenarios where you might want to implement monitoring. First is models in shadow mode. That's the cases where you actually generate models output, but you do not use it downstream the systems. I mean, you generate the output, you analyze it, and later you will decide whether you are going to deploy this model in production or not. And also A-B testing, because in this case you have several models generating some outputs and you compare the results from different models. In this case it also makes sense to have some monitoring, because all the models actually deployed in production. What is difficult about machine learning monitoring? Actually, we are quite lucky because we have software services deployed to production for ages and we can reuse quite a lot of our experience from those monitoring. I mean service health, because, well, when we deployed machine learning model to production, it's already a production software service and we need to implement monitoring for metrics like uptime, memory usage, disk usage, latency and things like this. So here you can go and use the standard way. But, together with service health, we have two extra layers, which are data health and model health. We need to care about both. Unfortunately, it's not always very straightforward. Even taking into account that there are quite a lot of standard quality metrics for, for example, classification or regression problems, it's not that straightforward to select the right metric and the right threshold. Let's take into account, for example, binary classification problem. If you work with balanced dataset, let's say 50% of target class and 50% of non-target class, and you see the accuracy score equal to 99%, you might easily conclude that your model operates quite well. But what if you have unbalanced classification problem? For example, fraud detection task, where the fraud is, let's say, less than 1%. In this case, if you have accuracy score equal to 99, it's really hard to conclude whether our model works well or not, because even if we have constant model, which always say it is not fraud, then we can easily achieve quality equal to 99% of accuracy or slightly more, right? So it's quite hard to figure out what is the right quality metric. It is always use case specific. Even if you finally selected the right quality metric, unfortunately, it's not always guaranteed that we will be able to calculate it. Let's say we try to solve demand forecast problem, where we need to predict the demand for some products or some services, let's say in a monthly horizon. In this case, during all this month, we won't be able to measure quality directly, because we just do not have the right values, right? We need to wait for the whole month until we get the right demand and see how good our model is. Unfortunately, if something has happened at the very beginning of this period, we won't be able to detect it directly and we might end up with using the wrong model. This is why it's quite important to come up with good proxy metrics or maybe data quality metrics in order to warn us earlier. Well, now we know what is machine learning monitoring? Now let's move to machine learning observability. Actually, there are quite different things, because when it comes to machine learning monitoring, basically what we need to implement here is define metrics to track, then track them, and we try to be pretty calculation efficient, because we need to have an online dashboard where we see all the metrics, preferably in real-time or near real-time mode, so that we can get alerts on time and react, right? And when it comes to machine learning monitoring, it basically helps us to detect 
known issues. It helps us to figure out what has happened and be more like reactive, right? But when it comes to machine learning models observability, generally we try to get some visibility into the whole system behavior. Here we are not that demanding into performance, but we need to understand in the details what's going on and perform some root cause analysis, like what has happened, why it happened, and where exactly it happened, right? So here we are trying to be more proactive and find some unknown unknowns. Now you see that those things are quite different, right? Unfortunately, sometimes both terms are used interchangeably, but there are some differences. I suggest us to look at machine learning monitoring uh, as a subset of machine learning observability and during the course we are going to discuss both. We can look at the whole spectrum. How observable is our machine learning system? Well, generally machine learning monitoring and observability helps us to detect a lot of issues, like for example missing data or maybe some features which are out of expected range, maybe data drift or concept drift or some sudden model quality drops. It helps us also to perform some root cause analysis and locate, for example, which exact columns are corrupted or maybe detect what roles are uh, corrupted or what segments are underperforming. It helps us to understand the model behavior in general. It helps us to provide some insights on how users interact with the model and if there are any changes in environment. Well, it also helps us to get some automation. For example, if you want to do some fallback or switching between different models, or if you want to trigger the training automatically, it helps us to implement this based on metrics as well. And finally, it helps us even to document model performance because it's quite important to communicate the quality of data or of model to many different stakeholders like data engineer, data scientists or product managers. Data scientists are very curious about models performance and for example model drift. However, data science manager might want to figure out whether it's time to retrain model or we can keep using the existing one. Product manager might want to figure out what are the model limitations, where to use it and where not to use it, right? And data engineer might want, might want to well, figure out whether everything is okay with data quality and data integrity. Well, there are quite a lot of different stakeholders. Model users who care about trust or not trust model predictions, business stakeholders, support, compliance. This is why it's quite important to implement machine learning monitoring and machine learning observability.